What is up my friends? My name is Kim and if you are interested in true crime like I am, I hope that you would consider hitting that subscribe button. I hope you are having a fabulous day. It is hot here. I am very hot. If you hear my fan, I am so sorry, but it's hot. You guys voted on the community survey tab for Michelle Blair and this is who you wanted to see. So this is your guys' fault. If you are not familiar who Michelle Blair is, she had killed her nine-year-old son, put him in a deep freezer, and then nine months later, she killed her 13-year-old daughter and stacked her on top of her son in the same freezer. Michelle Blair is one of the worst murderers I will cover. She shows and says she has no remorse. She is evil to the absolute core. This is a case that involves children, torture, strong language. I will play some clips throughout this video because Michelle Blair admits everything and she is strong in her convictions of why she did it. I will link the videos down below so if you'd like to see them in their entirety, please do. I don't recommend. They will make you furious, but check it out if you'd like to. They'll be listed below. <laughs> Michelle Angela Blair was born May 10th, 1979 in Detroit, Michigan. She has a brother named Marlon Blair. Growing up, she endured some of the worst conditions of living and some included drugs, violence, and even S.A. She was fatherless by the age of two and was left to understand the harsh realities of growing up in Detroit without a father. Blair clarified in an interview with Crime Watch Daily that the reasons why she felt that she had no other options for her crimes that she went on to commit and the reason why she felt so strongly about the situation was that Blair herself was essayed as a young girl. When she told her mother about what had happened to her, her mother said, it's over with. What do you want me to do about it? Blair's abuser was never brought to justice. So when her son came to her years later, telling her that his siblings were abusing him, Blair refused to disregard her child in the same way her mother had to her. Michelle had deep and troubling anger about what had happened to her. And in an interview, she explains this. Can you talk me through the, the type of abuse that you had to suffer as a kid? You mean sexual abuse? If that's what happened? That definitely did happen to me. That's why I know exactly how I would have grew up. I told my mother what happened to me. And the only thing she said was, it's over with so what the you want me to do about it? Fuck you mean what I want you to do? You get what I'm saying? So all I could do is go back and sit in my room and just sit there and look stupid. I'm a kid, and I'm just telling you what happened to me. You didn't do about it. And plus, I still had to see the person coming in and out of my house. You're still friends with that person. So do you believe that the, the violent person you went on to become is a, you were a product of your own childhood? I mean, everybody have choices. So I can't just blame all that on my mom because I was still an adult. Maybe I should have tried hard to get over that. But anybody who knows me, that touching the kids, the molesters, that no, no. If that's one thing I definitely would have killed over, it would have always been that. It's like, I grew up every day. I even tried to talk to my mom when I got in my mid-twenties. She had strokes and things like that. And I'm like, mom, she could barely talk. You could barely talk. Cause she had so many strokes and I'm telling you what my problem was always with you. The hitting and all that. I just asked you to do something. The person lives around the corner on this particular time it was just a woman named She lived around the corner. She wanna walk around like she big and bad all day. My mama, you, you, you big and bad, everybody's scared of you. But when I come to you with some real and I tell you what happened to me, you didn't walk your around that corner and do to that woman like a coward. So no. No. And this is why I say my kids knew better because I've always told them everything that happened to me. I told them why? Because I don't understand why it took me so long to tell my mom when I was a kid. You never talked to me about like this, but when I did come to you, you didn't do it. So I always made sure I told my kids this. I told them what happened to me, how it happened to me, how it made me feel in detail. And I say, if anybody ever touches y'all, you better tell me. 
they knew. I always talk to my kids about that, that touching from anybody. So they definitely knew. And this is the part that really gets me. I used to tell her, rape is the worst thing you can do. Just make you, I tell her all the time. They used to make me feel like I was nothing. It made me feel like I wasn't. You turn around and you do that to my son, you knew exactly what she was doing to him. She knew exactly what the she was doing to him. So yeah, she, man, I don't care what anybody think. She had to go, period. So I damn sure wasn't about to let grow up mad as hell all the damn time. Can't trust nobody. When it was just as simple as, you're my mother, do something. Didn't call the police, didn't do Just said, it's over with now. What the you want me to do about it? That's my response. So yeah, that's the problem. And this is what can happen to a kid. When like that goes. That wasn't happening to my son, period. So when I say he got closure, he got it. I know exactly what he was feeling. Even when my son was talking to me about some of the stuff, he would go like this to his face. He was like, Mom, and it felt so nasty. And that, that right there, I knew exactly what he was doing. I knew how he was feeling because that's how I used to feel. When he, when he did that, I knew it. There ain't no amount of talking. It was, no. So when you tell me she's a 13-year-old child, okay. Some of the most heinous crimes in this world has been by kids. So I, I don't want to hear that. That's my family. I don't give a damn what America thinks. But I also want to tell America they can kiss my ass. Don't throw no stones because they got a whole lot coming their way too. They just feel more comfortable for them to be able to say, well, my sin is not as bad as yours. At least I didn't kill my kids. That in God's eyes, we all down here. That's period. Okay. But I love and I love and I'm always love him. That's my son. Long before she had killed her two children, Michelle Blair had been abusing all of her children for years. And yes, I'm saying her name right. It doesn't sound right. It's how it's spelled. I'll put it up on the screen. I may go back to say Michelle just because it's just what I know, but it's Michelle. But I want to say Michelle. I think most people do. It doesn't sound right, but that's what it is. So long before she ha killed her two children, Blair was abusing all of her children for years. When brought in for questioning, her eldest daughter recalled times when she and her surviving brother had been beaten with extension cords, a piece of wood, a hot curling iron. They had been burned with a clothing iron. She also watched her mother abuse her siblings by choking them, throwing scolding hot water on both of them. Blair was actually investigated by the state over suspicions of child abuse in 2002 and in 2005, but Blair was only condemned to counseling magical parenting classes that given, in my opinion, CPS, just for a reason to sh shut the case and does nothing to protect the children as intended. In March 2015, the then 35-year-old Michelle Blair and her surviving children, who were aged 11 and age 17, were evicted from their family's low-income townhouse on Detroit's Lower East Side after Blair failed to pay her rent due to losing her job. They lived in this house for almost a decade, but after Blair became unemployed, she owed about $2,200 as the family's belongings were being removed due to this eviction. The 36th District Court, the dead bodies of the two children were found in Michelle's freezer. The two children that were found were age 9 and 13 years old and who were later discovered to be Blair's own children. Blair was later arrested and placed in police custody. Perhaps the only more shocking than the case itself was the fact that it took so long before Blair's crimes were discovered. They were living in this house with these bodies in the freezer. How did she sleep at night? pure evil.
The bodies of Michelle Blair's young children were found around 11.30 a.m. on Tuesday, March 24, 2015. Months later, when Blair pled guilty to killing them, she admitted that she had killed her 13-year-old daughter and her 9-year-old son several months apart from each other. The children's bodies were investigated by with their autopsies. Police and criminal an analysts came to the conclusion that they were actually killed about a year apart from each other, that one was killed in 2012 and the other in 2013 between 9 and 12 months apart. The idea that Michelle Blair casually lived in the home for years while her children remained dormant in this freezer could arguably be one of the more startling things in this case. When I first found out after Maddie told me, um, I took a minute because I was not understanding, you know, what was that she did that to him, but um, I repeatedly punched her. On many occasions, my son, I told him to tell me every single thing she did to him. So as she was telling me, he was telling me more and more things that she did. I assaulted her every time he told me what she did to him. Um, by assault, I mean I punched her. I have put a bag over her head till she lost consciousness. Um, I threw hot water on her, scalding hot water from the faucet. Um, Did you hit her in the head with a wooden yes, stick? Yes, I hit her in her head multiple times, over and over. Was that shortly before she died? That was actually days before she died and the day she died. Okay. Um, I hit her on her back, it's like with her tailbone. Um, I kicked her. Autopsies on the siblings' bodies confirmed that Blair had abused the deceased siblings long before killing them, as numerous visible and long-lasting scars were on them. Knowing how long both Stoney and Stephen Blair were kept in this freezer, one may wonder why no one, not the schools, not family, not the neighbors, wondered where they were. For the record, she also kept her surviving children out of school, so all four of her children were homeschooled. One of Michelle's neighbors came forward and expressed that she had wondered herself what had happened to the children after not seeing them for about a year. She admitted that whenever she or anyone else would ask Blair about the children, Blair would say they were at their aunt's house, that they preferred staying inside all day because they didn't like people. No schools nobody checked on these children. An official at the Detroit Public Schools confirmed that there was no record of the children attending any classes in their district. Can we all agree if you have or have had an active case with CPS, you lose the right to homeschool? How can we make this happen? Who in their right mind would ever think that Michelle Blair could possibly homeschool her children? Although Michelle Blair has expressed time and time again that she feels no remorse for killing her children, she did admit that one of her killings had been an accident. When it came to the death of 13-year-old Stoney, Michelle definitely meant to kill her. She says that openly. But Michelle feels no remorse after hitting her daughter repeatedly over the head, burned her with hot water, and strangled her to death with a grocery bag. And it was just, it was over with after that. It was over with. You meant to kill her? I definitely meant to kill her. Okay. Wasn't an accident? No, not at all. If I had a chance to do it again, I would. When you went and got the grocery bag. But when it came to her nine-year-old son, Stephen, on the other hand, Michelle claims that she only meant to seriously harm him. She didn't mean to kill him. She put a garbage bag over his head, choked him with a belt, punched him, kicked him, poured 
boiling hot water over his genitals and made him drink Windex. It would be face down, he had stuff around his neck. So I grabbed Steven and I grabbed a belt and I put a belt around his neck and I lifted him up like, do you like how this feels being choked with a belt? So I dropped him. I held him up until he lost consciousness as well. You were intending to... No, I did not intend to kill Steven. No, but no, no, I'm not. Listen to my question. You were intending to inflict serious physical harm, but not kill him. Definitely. Okay. Despite all of those things, she didn't mean to kill him, only punish him. What is the point of that, Michelle? What, what, do you want a cookie? Do you want a prize? What is the point? You're an awful person. Perhaps one of the strangest revelations to come out of this case was that Michelle Blair, in the wake of her killing of her children, actually did call the police. But not to turn herself in while Michelle Blair stands by the fact that she feels no remorse for killing her children. Blair did call the police once asking advice for a friend. <laughs> Remaining anonymous over the phone, she asked police what should be done if a friend found a child assaulting a sibling and also what would happen to the other children in the home afterwards. The call never went further than, than that. Uh, they came to the conclusion on the phone call that Child Protective Services could remove the other children from the home. Michelle, she decided that she didn't want all of her kids taken away, so she wasn't going to do anything or report the children. I'm just going to kill them. That's logical. In the wake of Michelle Blair's heinous crimes, Blair's two surviving children were put in the custody of Blair's great aunt. Uh, this aunt is a former Detroit police child abuse investigator. When asked how someone in her field never saw the signs that Blair had been abusing her children, uh, she admitted that she knew that there was abuse going on, but in the household, and she knew it had been going on for years, but never suspected that Blair could take it to the levels that she had. When she approached Blair and told her that she needs to start taking better care of her family, Blair was offended. And she was offended to the point enough to break off all contact with this aunt, even though she never knew just how far the niece could have possibly taken the abuse. She wishes that she had seen the signs earlier. Of course, there's some remorse with family members. You don't ever think it's going to go that far. I'm sure she kind of knew that she wasn't a good person, but did she suspect that she... The aunt, she should have done something. Maybe, I don't know. She, she just says that she didn't believe it would have gone that far. But is that a good way for children to grow up? Especially her knowing. Anyways, let's move on. Michelle uh, pled guilty and she didn't go to trial. She almost seemed proud of what she did. In taking her plea, Michelle provided shocking and graphic details explaining exactly why she had killed her children. She explained 13-year-old daughter Stoney and 9-year-old son Stephen made the claim that she had first killed Stoney because she had discovered that the girl was essaying her younger brother, who was only six years old at the time. After the youngest son approached her and told the mother that Stoney had been doing this to him, Blair suffocated Stoney with a grocery bag. She proceeded to force her oldest daughter to help her put the body into the freezer. A year later, Blair discovered that Stephen, the nine-year-old son, was essaying this same son. Much like she did with Stoney, Blair punished Stephen and then suffocated, suffocated him to death. One detail from Michelle's case that shook several onlookers in the wake of Olive was the fact that Blair actually forced her older daughter to help stuff the bodies in this freezer. Police reports expressed that Blair herself had admitted that she had her 17-year-old daughter help her lift up the two dead children's bodies into the freezer, place them in the freezer, stack them on top of each other. Months later, in a 
exclusive interview with Crime Watch Daily, Blair denounced and denied having made her older daughter lift the bodies, but stood by the fact that she made her older daughter help her. Considering what the older daughter watched her mother do to her siblings, the older daughter likely feared so much of her life, even considered refusing her mother's request could have severe consequences. Her brother and sisters are dropping off like flies. She's not saying anything. She's scared to death. She's going to do whatever her mom asks in her defense. I don't blame her. So this part gets a little bit rough. In addition to the several horrible things that she has already done to her children, Michelle Blair also was accused of starving her children and denying them of food. Blair would deny that she ever starved her children, but she did admit to denying her late son, Stephen, from eating. She did this after learning that Stephen had been stealing food from her youngest son. Blair decided to take away Stephen's meat for dinner. She didn't clarify whether it was a one-time thing or if she denied him on several occasions. Either way, police experts came to the conclusion that this would explain why Stephen appeared morbidly thin in autopsies, and Blair herself confirmed her denying him food as a reason why he had lost so much weight. His, that's his best friend. That's his brother. That's how he made his thing. But that's a lie. He kept Matthew up under his up under his wing on purpose. Matthew never wanted to be around Stephen, and I don't know how I didn't see that. So they would take his food and would actually only let him eat his vegetables. So yes, when I fed Stephen, he only got vegetables and like healthy things and it was minimal, like oatmeal and things like that. He did not get meat. He stole from my son and actually when I tried to feed him, my son Matthew said, Mom, that's bold. They used to take my food all the time. That's bold. You get what I'm saying? So yes. Now Stoney, I did starve her. I did. Nine more months, you go on and heal big ass. She was 13. My son told me how she used to sit on his. Considering the shocking nature of the murders of her own children, she feels absolutely no remorse for her crimes at all. But your actions ultimately caused this death. Yes, they did. Were you Stephen's mother? Yes. He was in your custody? I don't claim him as my son now, and I do not claim Stoney as my daughter. I have two children. That's it. Stephen and Stoney are demons, period. She admits to the sediment time and time again and even admitted she was doing her plea in her court testimony. Not only did she admit that she felt absolutely no remorse whatsoever in killing either of her children, particularly her daughter Stoney, she also admitted that she would do it again in a heartbeat if she had to. The closest to remorse she ever felt was when she considered turning herself in when she first killed Stoney, but quickly decided against it in order to continue taking care of the other two children. When Blair admitted that she had killed her children because they were S. Aang, the youngest son, the reason why she had did it is because her herself had this happen to her. It brought a lot of skeptics out of the woodwork. A lot of skeptics came out of the woodwork in an attempt to invalidate her claims. Some people found it all too coincidental for Blair to discover her children had been abusing their siblings when Blair had been abused many years beforehand. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, go ahead. Can we ask, ask um, Ms. Blair if she ever actually saw or witnessed any of these acts with regard to Okay, yeah. Did, did you ever actually see anything of any sexual abuse of any kind between either Stephen and Stoney and Matthew? I reject her question, but I will answer it because no one will say that this did not happen because it actually did. I just want to have a clear record. Because so far all you've told me was that you just heard it. Did you ever and that they admitted it. it. No, I did okay. not. You okay. get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I understand. But as I went back in my head and thought back to all the many things that was wrong with Matthew over the years, and I'm like, 
that's what was wrong with you. He'll use the bathroom and say, Mom, my butt hurts when I poop. When she admitted these things to you, were you always being physical with her? The first time, no. We were sitting there. Okay. She denied it. Who would admit that if they did not do it? Can I ask you a question first? The people standing behind me, this woman who just asked the question, is she trying to make it seem like this did not happen? No, no, no. Um, we just have to have a clear record. Okay. But this is moment. your time to talk. Go ahead. All we're trying to do is just make sure that the record is clear. Okay. And so don't let them behind you. Just do it. 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 I mean, right now, ma'am, this is just you choosing to plead guilty. The people do not have any sort of plea agreement. Yeah, because, you know, it's all. like I'm willing to take a, a polygraph test. It's like because I understand people don't want to hear me, period, but I'm willing to take it on everything. I'm to you. Tell me what happened to Stephen. Um, some critics blame Blair's accusations on an undiagnosed mental disorder stemming from PTSD or schizophrenia, perhaps. Some critics hypothesize that Blair truly did believe foul play was afoot, even when nothing had really happened. Other critics claim that if her youngest had made this claim to his mother, that he had probably been lying, but surely no children take a lie that far. Then again, the same can be said about Blair herself. The truth is that there are multiple sides to every story, one of those being the 100% truth. We may never be sure of what the truth really is. They both sound plausible that it did happen. It could be plausible that this child just wanted attention. Even if it's negative attention, children who are neglected will say and do anything for you to prove that you love them as a parent. They want that from their parents. And when they're not getting it, they will make things up. So that is possible as well. We don't know. It doesn't matter. Even if they were, it is never a reason to kill your children. They need help. So in 2017, just two years since it was discovered that Michelle Blair had convicted of her crimes, her parental rights of her surviving children were terminated. And these said children, who never were publicly named or photographed, were relocated to new homes. What we do know about Blair's surviving children is that the oldest, age 19 at this time, had graduated high school and had plans to attend college in the fall. When asked about her younger brother, the oldest child commented that he'd since been adopted and that she wasn't sure what happened to the aunt. It's good to know that despite the rough ordeal that the children went through that they're with their mother, that the oldest is going on to college. Not sure about the other child. I hope that they're, he's doing well and that he's getting help for everything that he's been through because it's traumatic. Michelle Blair is currently serving a life sentence in prison. Even behind bars, Blair continues to do horrible things to the people around her. Last we had heard anything about her was back in 2016 when Michigan Department of Corrections spokesperson Chris Grantz reported that Blair was not adjusting well to prison life. She partook in several acts of violence against her fellow inmates and guards. Such acts included throwing her own urine at prisoners and guards alike, punching people in the head, and threatening to kill again. On March 2, 2016, an assault and battery report was filed against Blair after she spat on a prisoner's head. After the incident, Blair was placed in segregation, meaning she will be put in a separate, separate special unit away from other inmates. Michelle Blair is, a, is fucking nuts and should spend the rest of her life in solitary confinement away from any other person to spread any toxic words, comments, suggestions, anything. She's a horrible person, and if the death penalty ever could apply, she deserved it. Of course, it doesn't apply. She pled guilty. It didn't even go to trial. Michigan doesn't have the death um, penalty, so it is what it is. Let me know your guys' thoughts about this case in the comments. I tell you, this was a, a tough one. 
She is awful, awful, awful. And also let me know who you guys want to see next. I have one in the queue already. I need some case suggestions from you guys. You guys always suggest the best cases. And if you guys have made it to the end, you guys are rock stars and I love you to death. There are more true crime videos in my Captured Killers playlist if you'd like to check those out. Either way, stay safe, my loves. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.